Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. One little known fact about Tesla is that you can hop inside of your car and have the car summoned to a location. You can do this with passengers in your car. Of course, you can't go that far, but what I'm gonna do is demonstrate this to you. I'm gonna walk inside of my car here. For safety purposes, I am going to put my seatbelt on even though I am in a parking lot. This is not public property and uh, we're gonna test it out here. So I have my app open and I'm gonna put that on the side of the screen. As you can see, nobody is in the driver's seat and I can wear my seatbelt, I cannot wear my seatbelt. The car will still move. It doesn't depend on who's sitting where. So this is truly an autonomous driving car at this point. And essentially the feature is set up to work so that nobody is in your car and you summon the car from the front of a grocery store, for example, when it's raining outside or you just are lazy, I guess, to walk out to your car. Here I have many, many videos. You can check out the uh, link for the list of videos at the end of this uh, where you can see the series, but I've been documenting this for quite some time. Smart Summon is only available if you have the full self-driving package. So I am inside of the app, and what I'm gonna do is tap on the steering wheel icon and it's going to zoom in and see where we're at. Actually, it doesn't zoom in, but it shows you where we are located. So I'm inside of this church parking lot right now. And I am going to physically zoom in just so that we can see. So I am, that dot that you see, the blue dot, is me. And that red arrow is the car. So they should be right on top of each other because I am actually inside of my car right now. There we go. It's, it's slowly recalibrating itself. So I am inside of the car. This is as far as I can zoom in. But this will allow me to summon the car within a 200 foot radius. So you see that blue circle there? That is indicating the 200 foot radius. If I say come to me, which is the button, which is that, that human icon that I just selected, you hit the come to me button. Now if I do that, it would be really silly because I'm already here, I'm in the car, so it wouldn't really go anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is select the target and I'm gonna tell it to go, let's say, over here so it's going to go down and around and then oops okay it changed its path it finds the best shortest most efficient path to go and then it will uh, try to, to make its way there and what i need to do now is just hit the go to target button so here we go the side mirrors just went in and the car is on its way I'm a little bit surprised the windshield wipers aren't moving. But here we are hands free. I am sitting inside of the car and the car is taking me to this destination. So this is as close as you're going to get to a robo taxi at this point. You know, I am not in the driver's seat. The car is completely driving itself. And this gives me an idea of how this operates every time I'm outside of the car. And to be honest, it's very, very, very slow. Now, if somebody, if this was a busy parking lot and somebody came up behind the car, driving at three miles an hour would cause a lot of frustration. So this results in a lot of times you running out to go retrieve your car before it actually gets to where you want it to go. So uh, it's not ideal and certainly has a long way to go. Now it's gonna arrive here at the crosshair mark and then say, we are here. So there we go, it puts itself in park and shuts itself off again. So now that we've arrived, what I can do is tell it to go even further. So I'll tell it to come up to here, up to the front of this church. A little bit surprising that it can't make up its mind whether to go around this curb on the left or on the right. Looks like it's going to go around the long way, which is surprising me a little bit. It's going to cut through here, I think. So the turn signal went on very briefly there, and I think it's going to cut through here. So there's some poles here. So hopefully it sees those. This is what makes me nervous, and I never know how much it can or cannot see. 
So there it's slowed down and, and it's actually going in reverse. That's one cool thing. So with Smart Summon, the car can go in reverse. Whereas with full self-driving beta, the car will not and cannot go in reverse. So it's fascinating to see and witness it here being in the car going in reverse. So it is possible. It's just not fully implemented with the beta. So here we're going in between those two poles and I think we got a little bit lucky. I don't know entirely if it can actually see obstacles like that when they're so small. So there, there's always a chance that it's going to hit something like that. So when you are monitoring it from outside of your vehicle, you do need to be extremely cautious and ready to take over or actually ready to stop and run it to take over. Uh, so that is Smart Summon as witnessed from the passenger seat. And you can have this done in the back seat. I've thought of doing some prank videos where I pick up like an Uber passenger and just for the heck of it, you know, I open up the door, I, I get into the passenger seat. Maybe I'm giving somebody else some ideas and they're going to run with it and their channel goes viral. But in, in my opinion, it's a little bit taboo to do something like that. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble and it's a little bit um, inappropriate in my opinion. So I'll, let, I'll leave that for someone else, but I think it would be a fun uh, prank to do. I think it would generate a lot of... Um, attention maybe unwanted attention <laughs> but anyway thanks a lot for watching hope everybody has a great day and i'll see you in the next video